Welcome, friends. This is Hello Country. And I can tell because my wonderful co-host, Papa Country, has his Hello Country hat on. He's wearing his Gray Highlands tuxedo, and he is ready to do the show. Hello, friend. Hello, Mike. Good to see you. Good to hear from you. How are you doing? Good. Uh, by the way, this podcast is uh, all about living in the country. You see uh, Papa Country there left the city. He's now living in Gray Highlands and in, in really... Uh, engulfed in the whole lifestyle of being a country guy. Uh, yeah. I am uh, stuck over here in the city, just admiring his lifestyle through photos, this podcast, and a wonderful magazine I recommend you pick up called Hello Country. Uh, where can people go online to get that? Oh, simple. It's uh, hellocountry.ca. That so is pretty the- easy. Yeah, you can uh, download episodes of the podcast there, uh, as well as on YouTube and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Now, uh, earlier in the week, you and I had the opportunity to uh, chat. And of course, uh, oh, by the way, subscribe to this podcast if you enjoy it, wherever you're listening to it. And we'll be back with more of them, uh, you know, ongoing. So there you go. Now, over the last uh, few days, you and I have been talking about uh, up to this point, from Christmas to this point, there's been a lot of snow haulage in your life. Uh, your, Your whole world seems to revolve around a mass of snow that just appeared in a matter of a couple of days and wouldn't go away. And now you're telling me a little bit of a thaw. Yeah. So moving up here from the city, um, this is like the most snow we've ever seen. And this winter, for whatever reason, seemed a little bit uh, more consistent with respect to the snowfall than last winter, this being our second winter, but this is our first winter with horses. So that adds a new dynamic into the mix. And speaking of mix, if you look outside, we got a real mix of uh, snow and, and, and mud and, of course, manure. Yeah. So that's going to be our life here on the Hello Country Farm for a number of months. I think we just basically go from snow season to mud season and back to snow season. I think that's how it works up here. I do see some uh, glimmers of beautiful uh, growth and spring life up there in photos. So just hang in there, man, because they're already, yes. po- they're already popping up in my last year's photos bin from you. And uh, uh, so it won't be oh, long. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the city naivete that we think spring is actually around the corner. But if I talk to locals, um, they kind of snicker <laughs> and they say, it's great <laughs> County, man. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, so spring might take a bit longer, but we'll see. All right. Um, well, you seem, yeah. you seem delighted and the horses are well, the family is good. Everybody's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Certainly looking forward to spring. Yeah, and it looks to me like uh, things are starting to loosen up a little bit uh, with regard to uh, pandemic restrictions. Uh, We'll be able to see each other a little bit more, hopefully, uh, in the coming days. I certainly hope so. Yeah. All right, now listen, uh, every time we do this show, uh, Papa Country, you come up with an amazing guest. This week is no exception, as we have one of the head honchos. Uh, Why don't we talk a little bit about today's guest, and then we'll bring him on and have a chat. Yeah, absolutely. Today's guest is none other than Mayor Paul McQueen. He's the uh, the mayor of Gray Highlands in Gray County. And uh, Paul's a, a very gracious fellow. He helped me uh, kind of guide me when I was first looking to start Hello Country, the printed version anyway. And uh, really happy to have him here on the podcast today. He's got some deep roots in uh, in Gray Highlands. So um, excited to hear uh what Paul has to say about uh, his experience growing up here in Great Highlands and, and and being the mayor. So, Paul, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, and thank you for inviting me, and uh, look forward to uh, having a great chat with you today. Papa Country, right? <laughs> that's right. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's it. Now, the mayor's a good sport. That's all I can say, because a couple of times an episode, I have to stop and, and call you <laughs> by your real name and then correct myself. So, that's well, right, yeah. well done, and Mr. How- mayor. I may call you Raj. That's knows. okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now uh, we you, you heard us uh, with the backstory there. Roger's kind of new to town. You've had an opportunity to talk to him. Um, but maybe the, the, the first thing we should do is uh, find out a little bit about you um, because your background is it's well steeped in uh, Gray Highlands. How did you, uh, what was it like growing up there and how did you become the mayor? Well, I, I guess uh, I'll start off with uh, certainly born and raised uh, in, uh, in Gray Highlands. And I, I will put a disclaimer. I was born in the Collingwood Hospital, which is just uh, outside of Gray County. And 
you know, that was the biggest local hospital in the area at the time. And, uh, you know, I uh, grew up on uh, our family farm uh, with my folks who are still on the uh, farm that uh, I grew up on today. Or my dad's going to be uh, 87. My mom's going to be around 84. So they're still home on the farm. And I think that's what keeps them, keeps them healthy. My dad, he walks every day. I went looking for him this morning. Couldn't find him. He's out walking around somewhere on the farm. He's still, we still cattle and we're beef farmers. And uh, so, yeah, so that's sort of a little bit there. And then uh, I bought the homestead farm back in about 1993. It's our original home, homestead farm that our ancestors came here in the 1850s uh, from Scotland. And so it's sort of great to have that uh, in our family. And I, my lovely wife, Cindy, and we have three boys, Matthew, Stephen, and uh, Jacob, and I, I, I must have a dis- put a disclaimer out there. I do have a Steve McQueen. Uh, yeah, my middle I son. heard that. Steve, yeah, and he's a Steve McQueen. And <laughs> not to take anything away from Matthew and Jacob, who are also uh, just uh, you know as fun as, as Stephen. But uh, yes, uh, and I you know I said to my wife, we got to have a Steve McQueen, and you know just, well, I'll leave it at that. But I'm he real is impressed. One. By the way, you would have got my vote on that alone. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i mean um they grew up on the farm i mean that's something we talked about wanting to raise our kids on the farm and, and uh, the country and uh it's sort of funny um my wife's niece who is uh, down by water down near hamilton she referenced our boys a few years back as being free-ranged free-range kids well they had the, they had the opportunity to have field cars and do all those things you do around and you know explore you learn and even to this day, uh, you know, they're, they, they think on their own and that's, that's so, so important. And, uh, they're farm kids and, uh, you know, they'll come up to you and have a conversation with you like, uh, nobody else. And, you know, that's one thing you, you learn and, you know, you, you know, you, 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 what's to say, uh, you intertwine with people, you talk to people, you know, they're, they, 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 they were raised that way and, and, uh, they're not afraid to talk to people. And, and so they're, you know, they're out and about. That's an interesting uh, observation, actually, about youth uh, between the city and the country. In the in the city, uh, you know, and, and this is not a bad rap on kids in the city at all, because many of them are very friendly, but they are insular to their groups and usually to their own uh, kind of demographics, their own age group and stuff. And I do notice right. that uh, youth in, in uh, places just rural of, uh, of Toronto are very more interactive with the community around them, their families, and, and I think that's because... Uh, they aren't so plugged in and they uh, they are integrated into the community. Well, and I'll say this, Mike, I mean, you go to a rural school, you get on a school bus, you drive a half an hour, you go to high school, you drive an hour, which I went to the same school and my, my boys went to uh, Maxwell uh, uh, Osprey Central and, and, and Gray Highland School, which is in Flesherton. And I, my youngest is still in grade 10. Uh, he's there today. So you do a lot of, I used to play cards on the bus and they learn how to play euchre, right? I'm sure you guys both know how to play euchre, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had that long bus ride thing going and when I was a kid too, living up in the country. And you're right, you create some, uh, some good bonds with yeah. your own family that you have to get back to home with and the friends uh, right around you become sort of uh, quintessential to, you, to, to your memories growing up. Yeah, and, and you know what? Our, our boys are, are modern kids. They all have, uh, you know, they all have smartphones. They all, that's, you know, you know, when we grew up, you know, yeah, yeah, you're on a you know, landline telephone and, you know, hey, there's, what are you guys doing tonight? I mean, this is so important. And you know what, for rural kids and, 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 and urban kids, they're all connected. And, you know, yeah. that's good that that brings yeah. that part. And I will say to my youngest, I say, so where's your, where's your, where's your brothers? And he'll look at Snapchat and, Oh yeah, well, one's over here and one's over there, so you sort of keep tuned in a little bit where they are, and you know that's that's all <laughs> that's all fun and part of that. So I mean, so where where I, I grew up is where my grandparents, and my great grandparents, and and you know, so you asked me how I got involved with um, being a mayor. Well, something you may be familiar with, um, uh, I, was, I was part of the Gray County Farm Safety or not Farm Safety, but. Uh, Junior Farmers mm-hmm. uh, Association, yeah. and that's that was right across Ontario. And um, uh, originally, I was part of the Creamore Junior Farmers because they had always had all the good dances. So they wanted to go that way to get to the dances, right? And and you know, how do you meet girls if you don't go to dances, right? So, <laughs> and then and then then became part of the Gray County Farm Safety, or um, keep going back to Farm Safety, but Gray County uh, Junior Farmers, and so that's sort of. And that was a good organization because that sort of built you a little bit understanding of 
of uh, governance and, and meetings and because you had you had you know regular meetings and you had a, chair, a president and a vice president and a secretary and and all those type of things and uh, so that was sort of the basis of that part and hey you know you you, you, you grow up in the country you got the only way you get out is on you know that's one thing is so important when you turn sixteen you get your license <laughs> right that's your means of getting off the farm absolutely right? yeah. yeah yeah the tractor only takes you so far. That's right. Yeah, right. You know, your bicycle or whatever you got, right? And I tell you, it doesn't take a lot of pedaling to get to, I remember one time my buddies and I, we pedaled to Collingwood and it wasn't too bad going down, but I tell you, it was a bugger coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Called the escarpment, right? But anyway, those are the things you do. And, and so um, anyway, you sort of, uh, so that's sort of, you know, junior farmers. And then, and then I don't know, back in the early mid nineties, I, I had no other, uh, there's just something that I had interest in. And in, in, in 1991, I sort of thought about running. I thought, no, I'll, you know, so 1994 is when I ran for council and I first got elected. And, uh, and certainly the story was at the time was, well, it wasn't you got you elected. It was your grandfather that got you elected. Ah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, you know, anyway, I sort of went, well, all right, whatever, you know, and, but I worked hard at that and, and uh, you know, came across, and I was, 30 years old at the time. And, uh, you know, there's, well, there's a disclaimer right there. Right. So, yeah, do the math. Anyway. <laughs> but, but you know what, I just, I had no other interest other than that's something I wanted to do. And, and I looked at, uh, you know, having, you know, a, a good, strong feeling for our, our community growing up here. And I always, I always joke every time I run for, for election, I always say my roots run deep. <laughs> so I say it tongue in cheek. Right. But anyway, so it's been good. And, gone through and you know a lot of the community has changed i mean we had the amalgamation back in 2000 which uh i was elected in osprey and then the amalgamation of uh, osprey artemisia euphrasia and mark dill and we came together in 2001 and and then uh, we all ran for council at that time i ran for the deputy mayor well you can imagine you have four municipalities and you got everybody funneling into having one council and uh I ran for deputy mayor and I wasn't successful. So I ran again in 2003 for council and I got reelected and I've been in council ever since and uh, ran for uh, deputy mayor in 2010. And, and then in 2014 ran for mayor and, and now in 2018 for mayor, and this is my second term as, as mayor. And uh, you know, um, you know, uh, just sort of keep, you know, working hard for the community. And as you become part of uh, council or the mayor and deputy mayor, then you also sit on, um, Great County Council, which is an upper tier. So, Mike, you might be more familiar with regional government. Re regional, regional council, government. sure. Yeah. So it's it's you know, and then you have single tier where we have uh, here in in Gray Highlands and Gray County uh, a lower upper tier. And I think there's somewhere around the 20 counties uh, in the province of Ontario that have that uh, yeah. system in place. And so, you know, also sitting on uh, on the upper tier government uh, county council at Own Sound is is uh, Great County Council, and and you know, there's um, so certainly both lower and upper tier look after roads. We have municipal roads, and you have county roads, but more your social services, land ambulance. You know, there was that whole download back in about uh, '97. You know, the Harris government had those changes and stuff like that, and. So land ambulance and social service as well, all came to the county. So there's different levels that, that now single tier, like city of Toronto or, you know, places like Mississauga and stuff, they have that where regional government also has some of that divide as well, right? There's, there's different, different um, aspects of, of that type of government. Yeah. So, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say in, in many of these uh, municipalities, that have the uh, sort of dual citizenship of the of a region region uh, as well regional council uh they they tend to work very well because it's the same group headed back to their own communities higher level yeah. yeah yeah for example peel region has uh uh brampton mississauga and caledon and uh a guy you should talk to sometime is uh, mayor alan thompson he's uh, he's the mayor of caledon i don't know if you know him but he's yeah. a great guy and uh, you know, well, he grew up on the farm too, right? So that's the last. That's the last farming area close to the city, it seems. So there you go. Well, it is, and it's growing, and and they have a lot of. Uh, just more recently, is a we're not going to get into that today, but that whole is it the four thirteen that they're talking yeah. about going around uh, there, and 
and I see that's uh, sort of on the on the burner right now. So, but anyway, you know, I mean, local government, you deal with a lot of different issues. We've had over the years, we've had great councils. Uh, you know, that's all so important. You, they all bring different aspects to council. Uh, you know, we have a good selection of having women on our council. You know, if you think about Agnes McPhail, well, you know, Gray County and, and Gray Highlands has been, you know, very, very uh, diversified in that way. And, and that's good. It's, it's always good to have different perspectives at the table. And uh, so, you know, I mean, every every term there's always different issues that you're dealing with. And, you know, I, I think back, well, you probably have just heard that the announcement of the new hospital for Markdale that's uh, moving forward and congratulations and, uh, yeah that was two weeks ago and that's sort of it sorry that's that's a big deal i think it is yeah i mean especially yeah. if you imagine you're having a, a baby for example i mean where else are you gonna go i mean you got you were born in collingwood but yeah owen sound i suppose you'd, you'd have to head yeah. up, up there now we can just drive 10 minutes well, no, I think still with the new hospital, they still won't they, they won't be doing birthing in, in the Markdale Hospital. I think it's still own sound. That that sort of got changed a few years back. But still, one twenty, you know, Highway Ten is a major corridor, yeah. as you know. Yeah. That you know, and so one of the big things of maintaining that hospital is a twenty four hour uh, emergency. Yeah. You know, you know, and I know that it's not a large hospital, but you 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 know, you probably all would agree. If they can't save you in the first 24 hours, they're not going to save you. You know, you got to get you stable. They got to get no, you. I think that it's been a major, uh, and also the orange helicopter service to that area, I think probably was a big call to that as well, because so much of it was centered on on that region and in that area. This, uh, this I think, is is overdue. And uh, as the pop, and we'll talk about this, as populations grow in your neighborhood, uh, Mayor, uh, this is going to become this is forward thinking and I think uh, probably a really, really good idea. So let's talk about that. A lot of us in the well, city freaking out now. Right. So, well, we, you, know, you know, healthcare is so important. Healthcare is so yeah. important. I mean, if you don't have your health, what do you got? Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's why I refer back to the 24 hours. They got to stabilize you. And I know there is some 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 worry about it. it's not big enough. It's too small and stuff. But. You know, you get get the new hospital and we're worried about getting it bigger. But uh, I mean, that has been a bit of an issue, right? Yeah, you're best to start building a hospital and make it bigger because it's easier to, to build onto something you rely on already, I believe. So well, that, the current hospital, the current hospital is like in the 1950, I think 1952 or something. Like it's, it's, it's old. Yeah. Older. Yeah. I, I gotta be careful there. <laughs> I was gonna say you, but, but, you you kind of put us all into it. You dated us all just a little bit there, but that's okay. <laughs> well, uh, I, so let me technology, let technology me ask you this: uh, as as we head to uh, an era where uh, there's so much evacuation of the of the big cities, uh, I'm hearing now even Hamilton. Uh, you know, certainly Wonder. certainly Toronto. People are although the housing prices don't show it people are definitely making a move to the suburbs and from the suburbs, they're making a move to the country and some right from the city to the country. Are you starting to feel the impact in, uh, in gray highlands of sort of the great migration? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I've watched, uh, I watched the, uh, on the website, the realtor.ca and you see something pop up and it's gone within a week. It's just yeah. like, it's, it's sold. But um, Mike, the big thing there was, and, and COVID-19 is, has sort of elevated. It. It's a whole part about broadband and working from home and, and it forced us into that situation. And, uh, you know, uh, so that's, that's a big game changer. And it goes back to the phone thing, right? It goes back to the part is, is it's about connecting and it's about, you know, equal on the equal uh, level where everybody can be on the same page where, you know, you don't have to be in Toronto or large cities today to get internet. I mean, certainly it needs to improve and, and, and broadband and, and they're working on that. And I will say from both, all levels of government, right down to the municipal, right up to the federal government, that's a high priority is getting better broadband and, and connectivity because there's so many communities out there that still need to be connected. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, and, and so, and, and, and just from that, Mike, you know, when we were thrown into the, um, into the pandemic and kids had to work from home, well, education is so important and, and having the ability for those kids to get uh, broadband is so, so important for their education as well. So going back to the part about people working from home, I don't know, Mike, um, 
or, or maybe Raj, uh, you're, you're driving into the city. But I tell you, you know, being on, I, I, you know, I've been part of AMO and AMO, the Association of Municipalities and Material, and driving down to University Ave. I certainly don't look for the anywhere from two hour to a three hour drive to be there by nine o'clock in the morning. And yeah. so that has been a game changer for those people that I think probably don't probably prefer to use that six hours, four to six hours a day doing something else. Than, yeah, I think you're okay. right. And, and, and if yeah. you're going to have that lifestyle, you, you, you probably are better to do that in a place where you have access to nature and a little bit of room to, to grow your family. I know I'm watching Roger there with young kids doing yeah. things that, that uh, young kids can only do uh, when they're in the country. Um, which is probably why uh, it, it's also, I think this is an excuse for many people to make the move. Are you, do you get a sense of that? Well, you get to see the stars, Mike. That is true. <laughs> right? It's, I, yeah, it's, nature is, I mean, with the whole change with climate change and the, and, and, and the whole, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. We know that. And again, it goes back to that, do you want to spend four to six hours of your life in a vehicle versus something else? You, you know what? Don't get me wrong. I don't mind the drive once in a while and stuff like that. But I think, you know, I mean, that's one thing we're not doing a lot is driving. And, you know, I find a lot of times, you know, wireless, I'll do a lot of my, my calls, my phone calls in, when I'm driving. So I try to take advantage of that. So you're yeah. not totally wasting that time, but you know what? Just, Hey, putting some nice music on there and going for a drive. I think we sort of, as Canadians, we sort of miss that drive too, because, why do we buy a sports car? Why do we like to go for a drive? I mean, when I grew up as a, as a kid, my mom and dad, they used to always go for drives on Sundays, right? That's just yeah. something that you did, right? You go for a drive because <laughs> you didn't drive, right? <laughs> it's so funny, also, during, especially if you lived on a farm during the week, you were on that farm. There was a lot of dedicated, oh. you, you went on utility trips, but you didn't yeah. go anywhere. And so on the weekend, oh. yeah, let's go someplace. And I do think that you're going to see a lot more. You talk about uh, the need for the hospital on Highway 10. And Roger, you and I have talked about this with uh, the folks at the cafe. And, and uh, you know, as, as cottage country becomes a bigger option for people, that hospital becomes more important. But yep. I think it's going to do economic development uh, in, in, where in other places there's going to be um, economic disruption. It seems to me that what's going to happen is the country is going to get a burst. I don't know. Roger, are you going to answer that one? Or? <laughs> well, I think it was directed to you, but my, my only comment there was I, I, I get the sense they're, they're building a fair bit in Markdale, sort yep. of very close to that hospital. And, uh, you know, one of the things that attracted us to Flesherton was its uh, lack of population growth. But I do certainly see value in development in a town like Markdale. Well, let me give you a two minute little spiel about Markdale and, and, and the last three to four years. So I started off with the hospital and yeah, you're right. People looking to locate healthcare and the ability and knowing you're getting a new hospital is so key. And I mean, our two major hospitals, Own Sound, Orangeville, Collingwood. So like I said to you earlier on, if they can't say, you know, having a 24 hour emergency is so important because if they need to send you to a specialist or some, they'll get you wherever, whether it's through an ambulance or whatever. So that's so key. Uh, a few years back, and I don't know, Roger, if you had um, talked to anybody about this, but we had an issue where we were going to lose our school. The, the, only one, uh, the only one school we had in Markdale uh, was scheduled to be closed. And that was back when the time when Chapman's put up the $2 million. If you remember that story a little bit. I remember that and news, yeah. And so that was something that the community, we, we, we said, look, that doesn't make sense. You're, you're, you take away this only one school that we have in our community with Chapman's is the largest employer that doesn't make sense. You know, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, so we, anyway, long story short, we turned that ship around and now I've just had a meeting this past week and you know, the, the province has committed to building a new hospital and they're right now they're at the design stage. And uh, again, where do people locate education and, and a place for your kids to go to school is, is, is so, so important. And the other part on the other end of the spectrum, is long-term care and and so we have uh, a home that's uh it's uh, so the county of gray and that's where another thing that um that's sort of mandated from provinces uh, each county must have one long-term care home but well, we have three my fingers here three here in gray county you can't count my fingers <laughs> um so one is in markdale and it's it's gray gables 
So again, um, about 2016, 17, the county was thinking that maybe they would sell Greg Gables off and one of our homes. And that was something else that's very critical that if you have an older home, you need to bring it to a class A type home versus the class C. And, and we have a home in Durham, which is in West Gray, and they were looking to upgrade it, but take the, take the, the number of beds you have from, uh, Gray Gables and Markdale and add it to the one and just build a bigger home and go back to two. Well, again, if you look at a map of Gray County, you have, we have a home in Markdale or in Own Sound, one in West Gray and one in uh, Markdale. Well, they're sort of strategically placed to sort of, and you remember long-term care homes are for those that are, you know, they can't uh, look after themselves anymore. They're, it, it, it's sort of one of those things that it's a need in our, in our community. Yeah. And we've heard a lot of things around long-term care. Anyway, long story short, we turned that ship around, and and that was a, a, a big discussion we had at the County of Gray, and then we put an application as the province had put out that they were looking at, I don't know, some crazy number of 30,000 new beds in the next 10 years and 10,000 in, in the next ten, five years. So anyway, we put an application and we got approved, and so our home in Markdale is going uh, from a 66 bed to 128 bed long-term care home. So right now we're at the early stages of looking how to design that. So Wow, that's a real turnaround from let's sell them off. You guys have convinced them, let's yep. keep it here. And in fact, let's insulate it and and uh, and bigify it. Uh, very cool. That's been, a, that's been a community coming together. Each of these times is not about me or somebody else. It's about the community standing up and yeah. saying, this is not right. And, and that's what a community does. We're all, all part of a community, right? And, and uh, so... So, you, so you, Markdale is the largest urban center of Gray Highlands, but it's certainly, we've had a lot of growth throughout Gray Highlands and, you know, the Beaver Valley and, you know, different areas. So where I live, I'm only 15, 20 minutes from Collingwood, north of St. Hampton, very, very rich and, and, uh, and a lot of uh, homes that people belong to Devil's Bend Ski Cove or some of the skis. So there's a lot of seasonal people where, where I live, which is, which is fine. It's just great. I mean, uh, you talk about local economic development. When when you get people coming up here, they get somebody to blow their snow, somebody cut their grass, somebody to clean their house. It's all it's all positive. It's all good. And and but a lot of those places, people are now becoming more permanent, right? They you know they they come up here and and they they realize that they so instead of going back to the city probably Monday, they may go back for two days and be up right. here for five, right? Yeah. The, yeah. They have that option. Right? Yeah, my um, neighbors like that. I think they're typically up here on the weekends, but now I see him up yeah. a heck of a lot more often. So I think they're figuring out a way to, to work from up here. Yeah, no, if you can, well, we are all using that as somewhat of an excuse uh, to, to get back to life. Uh, you know, we've talked about this. Uh, history of a last pandemic shows that we made some progress as human beings uh, that we might have forgotten. Uh, but we did just by uh, just by taking that time to be more with family, to be more in our yeah. own space um with a bit of peace uh and and almost too much time on our hands uh so it, it's interesting to me that that's going to be the case well let's do this before we wrap up let's do uh let's do a sales pitch for uh gray highlands for example you could go other places right <laughs> but if you were going to cottage if you were going to escape the city if you were just just going to go and enjoy a day in the country mayor over to you why gray highlands over to you if you want to be part of a community come to gray highlands well that is that is <laughs> well said. short and sweet and actually it yeah. is the greatest inspiration it, probably to go anywhere and it's uh it's bang on paul i think that uh, community is something that we feel very deeply here as as newcomers and i think certainly with the magazine i think it, it it helps to reach out and, and connect the communities within Great Highlands. So, no, I think that's an excellent uh, sales pitch. For sure. I, I, wanted, I want to make one comment about pandemic and, and families. I think I might, I always look at my glass always half full versus half empty. One thing I will say from our family is it's created the opportunity where we've been closer because we've been sort of, for, but there's probably that time we wouldn't have had if, we didn't have the pandemic. So it's, it's brought families closer together in the sense of, you know, just spending time together. And, and especially for our boys who are young and stuff like that, they probably 
prefer to be, you know, out giving her somewhere else, but yeah. you know what, but it's, 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 it's created that time together. And, and I, and I certainly was talking to my wife about that just, just, just the other day about you know, how, how that is one, I think one positive that we'll always remember that time we spent, spent together. Yeah. In fact, uh, you got it at a magical time because otherwise you wouldn't have at the age of your kids. So, uh, no, that's a, that's all. a good perspective. But you know what? We're going to party like it's 2029 once we're done. <laughs> yeah, let's hope it's not 2029, but uh, we certainly will. And uh, listen, I'll recommend that people check out Great. Where can people find out more? Uh, what's the website? Well, uh, greyhighlands.ca is our website. And there's also gray.ca, which is the county. And, you know, just Google Grey Highlands and all the great things that are happening here. And, uh, and hello country. Hey, I'm sure that's... Uh, there's lots to be told in there, right? So, Absolutely. and, and uh, you know, uh, Raj or, or Papa Country, right? <laughs> Listen, I'll still call you Raj. As, as long as we're talking names, it's good that you have a Steve McQueen, but actually to be Mayor McQueen sounds pretty damn cool, too, yeah. I have to say. <laughs> well, it's next to Lightning McQueen, right? That's right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> and I do, I do like cars. I do like cars. I do have a, I have a Bumblebee. You know what a Bumblebee yeah, is? Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, I have a well, listen, uh, I hope to get out there at some point and uh, get the mayoral yeah. tour of the back roads. Uh, but uh, listen, I wish you, the family, and everybody in the community safety. And uh, thank you for taking the time with us today, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I, it was great. And definitely we'll do that back, road, that back roads tour. I like that idea. Yeah, thanks for joining us today, Paul. Appreciate your time. Well, there you go, the mayor. How did you get the mayor, Papa Country? This is such a good question. Uh, I'm pretty sure I called him and he answered his phone. And, <laughs> and we just chatted for a while. He's ex extremely gracious with his time. No kidding. And, yeah. And so really happy to have uh, Mayor McQueen on the podcast today. And judging by our conversation, I think it would be amazing to have him back on. Yeah. Maybe do uh, some frequent updates about the, the happenings in and around Great Highlands. Indeed. Okay, look, before we get out of here, we yep. showed the mayor the uh, sweatshirt that you're wearing, and uh, uh, just when we uh, when we parted company there, why don't we talk more about that? Because these are selling out. There's more on the way. If you're a fan of where you live in uh, Gray County, just uh, show me that one more time. What is that sweatshirt you're wearing there, Papa Country? This is the Gray County Apparel Company tractor hoodie that has, has all but sold out from Susan's Delicatessen in Markdale. I'm at the point now where I'm ordering um, more sizes. We got to restock Susan's. Um, this particular design for whatever reason uh, has been very appealing to folks and uh, young, old, male, female, they love this tractor graphic. So yeah, the Great County Apparel Company uh, graciously sponsors this podcast as well as the magazine. And, and uh, I'll uh, tell you this, let me give you a little endorsement on the quality of this product best hoodie i've ever owned yeah it's like the the comfort and quality of it it's my favorite hoodie ever yeah yeah and so shout out to brent russell over at uh dundalk signs and textiles uh i just kind of put my trust in brent and uh he delivered so people wow. do love the quality of these hoodies we've got one for beaver valley and uh also one down in the tobacco and I'm looking to do more uh, for different areas like Collingwood, Muskoka, and Algonquin. So stay tuned on that. Where can people get the one in Gray County one more time? Yeah, Gray County and Beaver Valley hoodies are available at Susan's Delicatessen in Markdale. All right. Listen, Papa Country, it was good to see you. The beard looks great. Say Thank hi you. to the family. And, uh, man, I'll look forward to catching up with you on the next show. Yeah, it was a great show today. Thanks a lot, Mike.